Hey guys, my name is Ali and I'm a data analytics manager working in Oslo, Norway. In this video, we're going to take a look at an interview question or an interview problem and we are going to solve that. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to look at the problem, we're going to read through it, understand it, break it down from a business perspective, and then we're also going to start to think about it. We're going to mark off some things that we want to keep in mind when we solve this technically in SQL. The problem that I've created is from someone that works in a marketing department. They have sent me an email and let's just take a look at that and then we will take that with us when we go into SQL and we start to make some queries to respond to some of the questions. So hi Ali, I hope you are doing well. We are having our quarterly planning. The reason I'm marking off quarterly is that it says something about the what we are going to hand back is something that happens with a certain occurrence. Quarterly is not that often because often you want to notice how often are they asking for some information. If it's daily, if it's weekly, um, if it's monthly, then you also want to think about automation, but quarterly is not too bad. Um, need some information about our current, current product portfolio. So I'm going to mark that off because already I can tell that this person is asking for something related to products. So later when we jump into SQL Management Studio, I know that this has to do with products, which means that there are certain tables that are more re relevant than others. That is my Fedora. I will be right back. Woo! Let's finish this first though. So as we were, um, I have marked up quarterly planning and current product portfolio in yellow. I'm gonna mark up some things in another color and we'll keep going. Um, first of all, I need a list of all our products. So once again, the focus is products. I'm gonna mark this off in another color. Let's do green. Now, this is where I start to differentiate about what is business process related and what is technically. Because list of all our products, then I start to think, you know, I need to, I need to get a list of something. So that is a select st statement. Important that we filter out products that aren't valid anymore. So we're, we're gonna filter something out, which means then we're talking about a where clause. We are filtering a select statement uh, that are not valid anymore. So I need to look for something that indicates if something is valid, is valid or not. And I only want the ones that are from this year and last year. So I need to look for something that indicates is it valid or not. And how can I make sure that it is only products from this year and last year? Um, then we have how many products or how many did we actually start this year versus last year. So, okay, there is a year over year comparison that they are asking for. Could you help me out with that? Um, we just need the product names, the model and the description, preferably in English. So that tells me which columns do I need to select from my statement? Um, which language do they prefer? Um, let me see. The second thing which would really help us out is if we can get some data that gives us an idea of what our inventory looks like. Um, what we are focusing on is color and sizes as we need to look at having enough options across our inventory. Um, if you see any alarmingly low numbers, then would be great to have that pointed out. It would also be great if I could write full English sentences. Um, in this one, let's mark that out in yellow. Um, so what this means is that, you know, one part of the problem is to solve it technically. The other part is to try and think for yourself, you know, how can I try and derive something from this that they might not ask for directly, but which shows that I understand the process. I understand the importance of trying to give some feedback myself. And, and be a little bit creative with how I solve this. Which product has the highest opportunity of profit, profit, given that we actually sell it, of course. Now, what does that mean? That means that we are looking for something price related, but there is a condition there. It has to be something that we are selling um, at this moment. One part of my brain is thinking business, another part is thinking a little bit technical. Let's now jump into SQL Management Studio and I'll show you guys the SQL statements that I've written to solve this type of interview um, problem. So if we jump over to the statements, I will go through them one by one. This is for the third question, the second and the third. This is actually for the first question I remember now. So what I've done is I have made a select statement on the dim product table. Let me just show you guys what this gives me as an output. 
So I have the product name, I have the product description, I have the start date and the status of the actual, um, uh, the actual product. So what I've done is I have taken the English product name, I have given it the name, the pro uh, just product name, um, because I know that's what they wanted. I have commented out quite a bit of things that I didn't need because one part of the problem was that they wanted specific columns. So I have found those, I have selected those. Um, I have also the, the English description. If it has no description, it shows nothing. It is no. So let me show you guys what it looks like without the is null function. So if I select that, you see now we have product description and product description too. Now let's find one that doesn't have a description. Let me find one. There we are. So you can see now the one on the left has NA, which stands for not available. You can, you can fill it with whatever you want. But the original, it original one has a no. Now there was nothing in that, uh, what the email, what they wrote to me, which says that they, I need to do this but because I'm trying to think, you know, if I'm to pass some data on that, they need to do some analysis on instead of writing no, I could write NA, I could write no description available. I could replace it with something else. So it's not something they have specifically asked for, but because I understand that this is a data set, they're going to look at this, that they don't want stuff to be empty. They want it to look full and, and make sense. I have just added that there. So that is the is null function. Um, then I have done, let's see, we don't need that comma. Um, the start date is actually in the format, which is called, um, I believe it's date time. So we can just take a look at it. Start date as example. And then you can see the, the example column, well, it's, you can see here, the original column, which is now in the example, has the, the date and the time. So what I've done is I've used a cast function just to remove the time part because I think the date makes more sense. It looks cleaner. And the rest of it is really just a where clause where the status equals current because they have a status on the product, which means that it is current. I wanted the products which are for this year. So what I've done is I've added an a and clause and the year, um, year start date, which changes it to year format. I changed the year, uh, the start date to year. Um, and then I've said in 2020 or 2021. And the last thing I've done is I've ordered it by the product name, um, uh, ascending. So this is my response to the first question. The second part, is where we wanted to look at inventory across colors and sizes. So what I've done here is I have counted the product key as number of products. I have kept the size column and you know, it's, it's, I've used the same end to make sure that I'm looking at current products or started in 2020 or 2021, but I've done a group by on the size and I've done order by number of products. So this will give me how many products do we have per the different sizes. If I were to get this result, what I would notice is on some of them, there's a lot more on some of them, there's fewer. But what I notice is that there's actually 57 products here that don't have a size in the data. So you could actually point out data quality and you can even um, talk about how the distribution here is um, a number of products per size. Then if you want to, it was sizes and colors. So if I want the exact same thing, but I want it per color, I would go group, group by color. And I would, let's see where it's size. I would comment out the size. And then where is the color? And we can comment in color. I've changed the group by, so when I run this now, it's going to give me the same type of count. How many products do I have across all of the different colors? Here you can see there are some colors that have, you know, way more products than the other ones. There's also some that has NA, which maybe stands for not available. And then there are some that have fewer. So that was the one that talks a little bit about the inventory. And then of course you could have pointed out a lot of the, the um, data that has nothing on sizes. A lot of the products don't have any size. And then you can also point out here that, you know, red, silver, and white has there's not a lot of products that has those. For the third question, the problem that we had is 
A last thing that would be great to know is which product has the highest opportunity of profit given that we actually sell it, of course. So what I've done here is, once again, I have stuck with my from statement because I want it to be products that are relevant, they are current, they are being sold, or they have been started the last few years. And what I've done is I went through the different columns, I want the product name, I want the different costs of this product. So I have the, st I have the standard cost, the list price, the dealer price, and here I just kind of tried to be a little bit creative and think about some metrics that could be useful. So I've just taken the list price um, and, and uh, subtract that from the dealer price and look at the price difference and then figure out which products would give us um, the most in terms of markup value if we were to sell that compared to how much we bought it for. And then I have ordered that by the price difference. So, you know, that's not something that was in the problem. That's not something that was specific. But when you get something like that, you need to try and think a little bit outside the box. Look at what you have. And it's not about doing the most advanced stuff. It is about showing that you understand the actual business needs. Do you understand? Okay, well, if I take this, subtract it with that, this becomes that. I order it by that. I give you guys the product name. I'm still using the current or the relevant product for this time period. Then you have actually shown quite a lot of understanding. And you've also shown how do I read a business problem? How do I turn it into a technical SQL statement? And how do I pass back some information which I think could be useful in the context which they need it, um, which is this marketing product discussion that they're about to have. So that is an example of how you can take a interview problem or an interview question, how you can try and break it down from a business perspective, how do we identify some things and we bring that with us into a more of a technical environment. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos on data and analytics, then subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.